Previously on the terrors of the French Revolution, revolutionaries were sent to war, and the nobles left behind were slaughtered one by one. Former Queen Marie Antoinette was also executed. Who would the guillotine claim next? Find out in the latest episode of Explained. History of the French Revolution, the final part. The one ruling party left in France broke down into two pieces. By 1793, this divisiveness became very clear to the general public. The more harsher group called the Jacobins arrested the more lenient group called the Girardins. This meant that the whole National Assembly now consisted of really crazy radicals. This meant that the Great Terror was launched, a scheme that aimed to get rid of counter-revolutionaries. Robespierre, who we had previously mentioned as a pretty sensible guy, uh, turned quite harsh as well. He even reversed free press, even though he liked hot-blooded journalists sharing their views with the world. The problem was that said journalist might share views opposing Robespierre. So by now, he had complete control of France. During his rule, two very important organizations were made. The second one was morally disgusting, to say the least. The first one was called the Revolutionary Tribune. Their job was to investigate anyone who uttered a single word against the revolution. Actually, not even against the revolution itself. Anyone who said a word against any one of the revolutionary principles, whether it be the guillotine working way too much or the banning of free press, was charged with treason. We may think this was an extreme measure, but nobles that had escaped the country were planning to kill those dirty revolutionaries and make France great again. The second of these organizations was called Committee of Public Safety. A pretty ironic name, as you will find out. Uh, Robespierre personally oversaw the committee. What did the committee do exactly? They watched public executions. Not even conducting them, they just watched with sick satisfaction as the guy who said, maybe not kill everyone, executed as his family watches. Of course, Robespierre didn't think it was wrong. He said reign of terror is nothing other than justice, prompt, severe, inflexible. This inflexible justice would come to bite him later. Robespierre's power grew as the history and culture of France was erased, which made the other National Assembly leader, called Daton, very uneasy. He actually understood the part where the revolution would come to bite its own leaders, but he was the first one to face the music. Danton spoke against the running of guillotine 24-7 and was promptly handed over to the extremely just Revolutionary Tribunal. They claimed his concerns were treason and all of his partners were to be guillotined alongside him. Before dying, Danton predicted the same fate for Robespierre. His prediction soon came true. Actually, before dying, he said his only remorse was that the rat, Robespierre, had not died before him. Regardless by this time, all of Robespierre's potential opposers were dead. But for every man he killed, he gained five enemies. When he saw that people might oppose his mindless genocide, he started the Great Fear, a movement where he hunted down counter-revolutionaries and became responsible for at least 800 executions per month. He also started a new religion with himself appearing as the new God-staunch Christians were supposed to worship. He made the introduction by ordering a papier-mâché model of a mountain with himself in a toga on top. People would have laughed, but the guillotine was making way too much noise in the background. After this event, people went from viewing him as a strict ruler to a mad one, and they could deal with executions. But France had already dealt with way too many crazy rulers in the past. Robespierre immediately detected this shift in the atmosphere and wrote yet another document that would send more people to the guillotine. However, before he could deliver the document himself and his allies were carried off to the tribunal and a trial was set up. Robespierre could not bear to be executed in the same place he had sent so many people to. So he shot himself. Unfortunately for him, he was really bad at aiming, so he blew off his jaw and yet survived. 
His opposers found him withering in agony, but they had experienced his gleeful smile as he watched people he murdered. They had no sympathy for the monster. Robespierre was executed by the guillotine that very next day. And it solved almost none of the problems. Well, the reign of terror had ended, but politically, the situation was even more confusing. The most influential leaders got together and formed an almost government where they themselves were confused about who to please. Turns out, they pleased no one. The government called the Directory, claimed that it was a Republican Party, but people thought that the freedom promises of the early revolution were lost again. The leaders weren't people who were elected by the general public, even if almost all the public was ineligible to vote. Still, people wanted to feel at least some power in their hands, but all the leaders were appointed within the directory. When the voting finally did come, only 30,000 of the richest Frenchmen were allowed to vote. People thought that France, after bearing decades of war and executions, was reverting back to what had gotten them into these messes in the first place, monarchy. But the people were wrong. Mistakes of the directory will cause France to become a dictatorship. One of these mistakes was calling the military to stop rioting in opposition to the Constitution. A very famous Revolutionary War hero showed up. A little guy by the name of Napoleon Bonaparte. Heard of him? His military valor would stabilize France somewhat, as we will see. Meanwhile, the Republic had failed. Everyone was once again dying of hunger. Furthermore, aristocrats who had fled France started to come back, and to the people it seemed like monarchy was about to be reestablished. On the border, though, France was doing great. It was gaining victories, and Napoleon's war strategies were the talk of Europe. This war hero returned to Paris, took one look at the directory, and threw them out. The power shifted entirely to him. To win the favor of his people, Napoleon reinstated the church that was previously banned because people might worship someone other than Robespierre. Napoleon had come back with peace treaties, meaning that he intended to be in power right in Paris. This rule was a fresh alternative for people who hated both monarchy and the weird non-Republican stages of terror it had just been through. Parisians thought that the new regime might finally bring them security of life, property, and dignity that they had been hoping for for so many years. And if we ended the story here, it would be a happy and hopeful ending, at least for anyone who doesn't realize that dictatorship is never, ever good for the people or their life, property, and dignity. As much as we like to think the opposite, France still had to hit rock bottom. Its people might be exhausted from the constant terror that had started with Marie Antoinette's parties, but there were still some really horrible things to come. If you would like us to continue this story, let us know in the comments section down below. This was the history of the revolution, filled solely with tears and blood. Which part made you the saddest? Again, comment down below and we'll pin the best one. Like this video and share it with everyone you know. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for more series on amazing historical events. This was Explained, bringing you the best history lessons. Tune in for more.